My data suggests young children are learning in preschool that boys have gendered power over girls' bodies. Say the alt-right. Do they have any semblance of guilt? This what, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. So, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. What about the alt all right, and Chatelet, my dudes, and welcome to Polecat Cast number 122. A million dollars for secondary degree rape? Where our selfie polecats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fuck to discuss Slam Bam Badger style. We have four great stories lined up for today, so mind your spines for the cringe, hold on to your sides for the lulls, and keep your chemo at the ready for this cancer. Today's polecat panel consists of Max Darrett, Simpsons Kin, and definitely not Lemon Grab, because that would be UNACCEPTABLE! Polecat what? Punter and Pussycat Punisher Hannah, Dr. Random Rakan, Panda, Puppet Master, and Long Range Rhetorician, and me with his glorious Crucigur and Scepter in hand, the Supreme Doge in charge. Uh, but Max, the Lem Grab is from um, Adventure Time. He's a lemon headed guy who's always screaming unacceptable. You might not know that one, but I'm running out of uh, yellow. I mean, running out of yellow characters, Max. Is basically no, what I'm it's saying. okay, dude. I, I appreciate the <laughs> continuing joke. Sorry that I'm a normie. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it says I'm getting some interruptions in the signal, but we're going to see how this goes. I'm going to push. We're going to power through this like Hillary Clinton. We're going to power through it. All right. Today, we'll be discussing the following topics. Sociologists are now making the claim that the reason we live in a heteronormative society has nothing to do with things like needing heterosexuality to reproduce and perpetuate the species. <laughs> That's silly. But instead, it's because preschool indoctrinates and socializes children out of being homosexual. Because at fucking four, you should know how gay you are. 31-year-old Jennifer Caswell was found guilty of second-degree rape of a 15-year-old boy and is currently serving 10 to 15 years in prison. Justice is served, but it gets even better. She now has to pay the plaintiff, the 15-year-old rape victim, one million simoleons for the distress that she caused him. The meme-filled Lazy Town likely put a lot of pedos in the CIA's most watch list. But something else you might not know about the Icelandic children's show is that actor Stefan Carl Stefansson, yes, that's his real name, who played Robbie Rotten on the show, was battling a bile duct cancer behind the scenes. And it would now appear at this time that he is cancer free. After the crazy events of last week's notorious Google memo, a lot of white knights and feminists, both in and outside the megacorporation, have renounced and accused the original memo writer James DeMore of sexism, Nazism, being an alt-right sympathizer, of being an alt-right martyr and darling, and even liking pineapple on his pizza. Oh, the humanity. But some people are beginning to speak out in his defense. One such woman is an ex-Google tech leader named, get this, this is her real name, Vidya Naranyanyan. Yes, Vidya is literally her real name. No actual, actual, actual geek girl confirmed. Let's see what she has to say about this manifesto of hate and gender realism. And finally, our bonus story for the patron-only after show. Uh, this is the third in a series I've been doing so far where I've been reading from my newly and uh, recently purchased book, Milo's Dangerous, from where I got from Amazon, because while I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, I think his fighting on behalf of free speech far eclipses any differences that we may have. So I thought it would be fun for me to read the book to the patrons. So we've been reading through the chapter, Why Feminists Hate Me, and I think we're, it's a pretty big chapter full of a lot of pages, so... We're probably about uh, eight or nine pages in at this point. So if you want to join us for that, excuse me, for the reading of that and the after show, uh, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash Honey Badger Radio. Tell us about preschool. All right. What, my experiences in preschool? That's yes. just a nightmare waiting to happen. Anyways, <laughs> kids. Let me tell you a story about a woman named Heidi Ganson. 
Ivy is a doctoral student at the University of Michigan. Her research interests include gender, sexuality, and childhood. At what point did including those three things side by side in the same sentence become a non-issue? <laughs> Last month, Heidi had one of her research papers published in a journal called Sociology of Education. Before you ask, allow me to confirm that, yes, the title of the paper is a bunch of buzzwords strung together. The title is Reproducing and Disrupting Heteronormativity, Gendered Sexual Socialization in Preschool Classrooms. While reading the abstract, you can see the sorrowful downfall of the social sciences reflecting back on you. Here are a couple of quotes. This is the first line of the abstract. Using ethnographic data from 10 months of observations in nine preschool classrooms, I examine gendered sexual socialization children receive from teachers' practices and reproduce through peer interactions. Here's another one. This, oh, man. My data suggests young children are learning in preschool that boys had gendered power over girls' bodies. What? <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. No, it, it, let's keep going. Like, that's the age when girls start tattling and getting rewarded for it by the teachers. Uh, no, boys clearly have power at all times because patriarchy. Okay. Oh, my yeah. God. And here's the worst part, okay? The, the children in question, some of them are only two years old. Heidi determined that teachers are, quote, actively promoting or encouraging heterosexual discourses and practices. And the example she cites includes a teacher actively encouraging two-year-old children to have crushes. However, if two children of the same sex were holding hands or engaging in the same behaviors, the teachers wouldn't actively encourage them to be in a relationship, insisting they were, quote, unquote, friends. Apparently, Ganson received an outstanding graduate student award from the American Sociological Association for this paper. A woman who thinks we should be teaching two-year-old kids about gay relationships. About relationships? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if two kids are holding hands at two years old and somebody says they're in anything more than a friendship at all for any reason, hetero or homo, doesn't matter, they're wrong and yeah. stupid. Judge awards one million dollars. One million dollars. <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> to, <laughs> to boy who was raped by teacher in 2015, an Oklahoma teacher, Jennifer Caswell, pleaded guilty to second degree rape and other related charges. She is currently serving 15 years in prison, five of them suspended. The boy, who was not named and his family sued Caswell for causing emotional distress and spreading information about the rape, as well as the school district for failing to address the issue. After news of the sexual encounter between Caswell and the boy spread throughout the school, the boy experienced mockery to such a level that he was forced to change schools to avoid encounters with anyone that knew who he was. According to therapists, the boy will experience issues in the future trusting women especially women that have authority over him. Despite the $1 million award, it is very unlikely that the family will see any of that money, considering that Caswell will be in prison for at least a few more years. She's been sentenced to 10, 10 years. Or 15, rather. Uh, how, however, the more shocking part of this story is how Caswell attempted to rationalize her way out of the responsibility. Caswell tried to blame her husband and the boy, stating that, quote, I felt very unwanted by my husband. I was with him for 10 years and I was never complimented. We never held hands or were physical, end quote, and added that he, the boy that is, was very flirty and I should have put a stop to it, but I didn't. I wasn't used to the attention, end quote. Describing the encounter, Caswell said that, quote, he came in, I was working on things, he kept coming closer to me, and I would kind of walk away to the other part, you know, the other room, another area of the classroom, and he just walked up to me, and then he kissed me. And then it just kind of went from there, end quote. If Caswell was a responsible adult, she could have easily not had sex with her student. By her own admission, quote, he wasn't forcing me. I mean, I could have easily just walked out of my classroom. But I didn't. End quote. 
Stefan Carl Stephenson, an Icelandic actor better known as Robbie Rotten from the popular children's show Lazy Town, has had a rough year after being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer back in October of 2016. After becoming too ill to work, the head writer of Lazy Town, Mark Valenti, set up a GoFundMe campaign to help Stephenson pay for his cost of living. The internet has since rallied around Stephenson, helping him raise over $162,000 and also immortalizing him and his performance as Robbie Rotten into a popular internet meme. But after a successful liver surgery in June, Stephenson is currently free of all cancer metastases. This comes as a surprise, albeit a welcome one, seeing as the type of cancer Stephenson had comes with a survival rate of 1%. Stephenson remains optimistic, though cautious, stating that although he is free of the metastases at the moment, he is not totally free of the cancer. Currently, Stephenson is working on a cancer-focused stand-up comedy routine with comedian Ari Eld Eljarn. I hope I pronounced that correct. I, I didn't know that there were any names outside of Iceland except Bjork, so I'm learning stuff all the time. He also plans on making a return to the theater later this year and has a secret project in the works, which he plans to make known soon. There are some encouraging stories of coming out from the Google memo. An ex-Google woman tech leader has written an article about being sick of our approach to diversity. Vidya Naranyanan, that's her name, Vidya, has moved on to start her own software company, Urban AMA, where she's built her own tech team, but also did a lot of hiring for Google. She says 97% of the people who she hired were men, although she was not avoiding hiring women. Vidya finds a similar situation now with her own company, finding a 98% male candidate pool with few women doing well in their interviews. She says, quote, you should know that we are an early stage startup that cannot afford market salaries. Despite that, we paid premium salaries to bring a few women who did well in our interviews, but they lacked the energy to put us into overdrive. Worse, they were starting to drain the energy from the rest of the team. Eventually, we had to do the right thing for the company and let them go. I'm now back to being the only woman on the tech team. End quote. She goes on to say that the obsession with diversity and attempts to solve it are only fucking it up for the actual women in tech out there. Her reasoning? We get upset about the state of gender diversity in tech. We make a pact to hire more women. The pool has a lot more men than women. After some rounds of low to no success, we start to compromise and hire women just because we have to. These women show up at work and perform not as great as we want them to. It reinforces to the male population that was already peeved by the diversity push that women aren't that good at tech after all. They generalize that observation on the entire women in tech community. Sooner or later, some such opinions get out there. The feminists among us go crazy. The diversity advocates are caught in a frenzy and make a pact to hire more women again. And then this loops infinitely forever. In the name of diversity, when we fill quotas to, me to check boxes, we fuck it up for the genuinely amazing women in tech. And it makes me sick. End quote. According to an interview with James Den More, or De More on the Google Memo by Kathy Young, Vidya is not alone in her statements. James says that many of the women in tech that don't believe all disparities are due to sexism are sick and tired of being made to feel like victims by the progressive narrative. Hi, my name is Allison Tiemann, and I'm the founder of Honey Badger Brigade. I sometimes look at these big companies and think about the little company I've built, and I definitely feel like a failure. I know it's irrational, different purpose and all, but it's hard not to see these big tech and media giants, even ones that started about the same time we did, as having won the race. But after all this, I realized something. A place like Google might have 60,000 employees, it might have offices that look like a Disney theme park, it might have electric bikes and arcades and slides instead of stairs, but my tiny company has one thing it doesn't and never will. One thing that a lot of those other companies don't either. Freedom of thought. Imagine our ecology of thought like healthy skin. When you have healthy skin, you have a diversity of microorganisms, all living in balance with each other healthy strains of bacteria thriving. And 
Any pathogens have to fight to find a foothold, because there just isn't enough room for them. So if you don't want to deal with authoritarian fascists of all stripes, don't create the environment they live in. Make sure you have a diverse ecology of thought, because scrubbing your skin raw with antibiotics will only leave a hole easily populated by pathogens. But maintaining that healthy ecology of thought requires our thought leaders to be motivated by balance and intellectual diversity and not absolute deathly purity. That requires our thought leaders to tolerate a few germs in their pristine fields of luck think. Not going to happen. Because if you point this out, you're obviously a germ sympathizer. That's what we're seeing right now. A showdown between people addicted to ideological extermination and the pathogens that infest the wastelands they leave behind. And the only victim is, well, civilization! Yay! Yeah, let's just burn it all to get rid of those gross, ugly little germs. After all, no bad can come from exterminating all the germs. All of them. Every single one. Everything that's a germ must go. No bad can come of that. And if you're listening to me now and you want to support a workplace that actually values true freedom of thought and, you know, not destroying the world in your pursuit of ideological purity, go to www.feedthebadger.com and make sure we can continue to exist. Even if Honey Badger Radio is only a tiny oasis of intellectual diversity in the vast nuclear desert of absolute ideological purity, at least there's one. <laughs> So let's make sure it counts for something. The only thing left is uh, for me to essentially show the channel. So if you enjoy this content, please subscribe to Honey Badger live streams. That's the uh, what you're looking at right now. If you can um, share this video with other people, it went live on Twitch and Facebook and other places. So if you didn't see us here and you saw us there, I don't know if there's a means to share it in those places, but please try to do so. Let's get, let's keep the conversation going. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say about all of our stories in the comments section. I always look at them. Uh, and we're going to go on and head over to the after show. So in the after show, I'm going to be reading the uh, Milo's book, Dangerous. I'm going to keep on going through the next to, through the uh, feminist chapter. So we'll we'll see you there. If you guys are uh, patrons, if you aren't, become one at www.patreon.com forward slash Honey Badger Radio. And I'd like to thank Mike, Hannah, Max, and myself for coming on the stream today, as well as you guys, the audience, for joining us. And we'll see you guys.